Okay. <coughs> no worries. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure for me uh, to be here. I would like to thank uh, UCR uh, to uh, having invited me here. In particular, I would like to uh, th thank uh, Samar and Michele, who insisted a lot uh, to uh, make me uh, come here between a trip to the United States and one to Canada. Uh, so um, I will talk to you about uh, Sesame and uh, what we are doing for uh, science uh, in the Middle East and uh, giving you a sort of an overview of how uh, the Sesame idea developed and uh, what we are doing at the moment. Just a personal um, uh, touch, as you can see, uh, I'm showing here the, uh, I'm showing here the, um, the place I come from and the place I went to, so I'm from Trieste originally, I was in the Italian uh, Synchro Radiation Center. I'm saying that because uh, the uh, location of the laboratory in Trieste was chosen, as you can see, very close to the border of Italy uh, towards the eastern uh, part of uh, Europe. When, uh, the, uh, when the laboratory was set up, uh, the idea was, ex was uh, uh, the implicit idea of, loca of locating the laboratory there was to have a bridge between uh, uh, West Europe and Eastern Europe. Uh, the idea uh, came in the 80s when uh, uh, Europe was still divided into two big blocks. And uh, uh, so uh, somehow uh, the story is repeating now of having uh, uh, science uh, as, a, uh, as a way of helping uh, people to uh, communicate and uh, to uh, dialogue uh, between uh, uh, different cultures and different ideas and uh, different uh, uh, political systems. Uh, for those of you, who, uh, for the three of you probably, who do not know uh, what a synchrotron uh, looks like, that's a, a sketch. Uh, there is uh, uh, basically a synchrotron is a big uh, light bulb, as I normally call it. Uh, it's a rather expensive light bulb, which is uh, in which you accelerate electrons, you have uh, an injector, and uh, which uh, pre-accelerate the electrons, and then uh, the electrons are stored in a storage ring. And uh, uh, by accelerating them, you produce radiation, which is collected uh, by um, optical systems, which we call beam lines. As I mentioned yesterday by Samar, the obs first observation of synchro radiation is uh, uh, quite old. Actually, uh, this is the first paper reporting the observation of synchro radiation. Uh, which uh, is dated in 1948. And uh, for s many years, uh, for several decades actually, synchrotation was regarded as, a, uh, an, as an annoying uh, uh, property of accelerators uh, because of course uh, if uh, electrons emit uh, radiation, uh, they lose energy and, they, and you have to give the energy back to them. However, it was clear uh, with time that uh, the uh, characteristic of synchronization is, are such that uh, there are things uh, that you can do with synchronization which you cannot do uh, in, in other ways. And that is due to the fact uh, that the electrons you're using are very high uh, speed electrons, so uh, you have a lot of relativity. I, I think I can skip this one. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so we just uh, go to the, to the final result, which is that. Uh, uh, an electron ha has associated with it a, um, a uh, sine squares type of uh, radiation pattern with it uh, in, uh, the, uh, in its uh, own uh, frame of reference. But when you observe uh, the moving electron from the laboratory frame, so, uh, framework, uh, it, uh, uh, the angles between uh, all the, the radiation pattern gets uh, very well uh, focused in the forward direction. And the result is that if you think of this electron uh, which you see from the, uh, from the, um, uh, from the uh, laboratory, uh, uh, which this very narrow fan of radiation associated to it, it produces a very short pulse of radiation, uh, which uh, is given by that formula. Uh, do not uh, look at the, uh, all the details, but the important thing is that if you 
put the numbers and consider a machine like Sesame, uh, you end up uh, uh, with the pulse duration, which is of the order of 10 to the minus 20 seconds, so a very, very short pulse. And of course, uh, all of you are crystallog crystallographers, so uh, you know everything about Fourier transforms. So you can all, you cannot, you not only can you transform uh, from uh, uh, real space to reciprocal space, but you can uh, transform uh, from uh, time uh, to frequency, of course. And so, if you have a very short uh, uh, pulse uh, in uh, uh, in time, that gives you a very broad spectrum in uh, uh, in energy. Uh, so that's the basic idea. So you have a short pulse and a broad, uh, a broad spectrum. There are other characteristics, of course, which are the, uh, as I said, is uh, very well focused in uh, front, uh, uh, in the forward direction. Uh, it has a very high degree of polarization and the broadband uh, we already uh, discussed. Once you have, uh, have understood that there is a way of producing uh, uh, very well uh, uh, collimated radiation by bending uh, uh, the electrons once, uh, you think, well, I can bend electrons uh, several times. So uh, instead of doing that, uh, you do that and you build uh, what is called an undulator, uh, which is uh, nothing else than a series of uh, bending magnets uh, which produce a very, very uh, high intensity beam. Then between uh, uh, the source and the sample, you put uh, what is called the beam line, uh, which has the, uh, which makes the uh, the work of uh, collecting the radiation and bringing it to the sample. And since you know everything about the radiation and you measure all the effects uh, uh, you want uh, uh, induced by the sample, uh, you can uh, get information in the sample. So. For example, you look at the diffracted beam, uh, diffraction patterns, and then you get information on the structure. As I said, uh, synchrotron radiation, as I said also before, during the, um, during the uh, panel discussion, um, has uh, the virtue that because of these characteristics of very uh, broad uh, spectrum and uh, uh, the fact that you can apply it to a number of different samples and you can think of several applications um, puts together brains uh, and ideas uh, which are difficult to, to put together in, say, a university department, uh, just to mention an example of uh, which uh, you're probably all, all uh, well aware of. And so uh, I've chosen one example of application of synchrotron radiation, which I thought uh, uh, could be interesting uh, for everybody, and uh, uh, which uh, really puts together expertise uh, uh, of various kinds. And that was the, an experiment, uh, a, a measurement, which was done in, uh, in a couple of uh, uh, sources in Europe, in Hamburg and in uh, and the ASRF. And basically, what they did, uh, they looked uh, at uh, a painting by Van Gogh. It took me some time to learn how to pronounce uh, his name properly. I hope it's the correct way. And I hope you <laughs> uh, we, I have a Dutch colleague at the letter, so he insisted a lot with me. So uh, this uh, painting by Van Gogh, in which uh, uh, basically, uh, this is the painting in the uh, upper uh, right uh, corner, and uh, as you can see, it's a nice, uh, it's a li a nice uh, um, loan, and uh, it was known by conventional methods, so by infrared and uh, and uh, X-ray reflectivity, that uh, uh, this painting is actually hiding an older painting, uh, a, a portrait of a lady, uh, which you can barely see in the two top uh, bottom uh, figures. Now, that was known, okay. Uh, with sync radiation, of course, uh, you can uh, uh, focus the beam uh, to a very uh, small area, and you can use, for example, fluorescence. And by doing that, uh, uh, these are the images uh, which are coming from the, uh, from the fluorescence uh, uh, emission of lead, uh, antimony, uh, mercury, and zinc. And you can see, okay, the main information you get here, okay, most of the painting is from antimony. Okay, that's, uh, that's a good, uh, a, a nice uh, thing to say. However, what you can say more, if you look at the, I hope, 
yes, you, if you look at the region uh, on the left eye, around the left eye uh, of the portrait, what you can do is you can, uh, you can uh, by using the tunability of sync radiation, uh, you can uh, uh, measure what is called as known as uh, near edge uh, extraabsorption, and uh, uh, in this area, in this picture, I'm showing uh, the top uh, uh, top pole spectrum in the, uh, the, two the two cases is measured on the uh, on the painting, uh, while the other are um, are, uh, are known uh, paints used at the time. Okay. So the idea is that you, by, you go by point by point, you measure the uh, absorption spectrum point by point on the, uh, on the, uh, on the painting, and uh, you reconstruct the absorption spectrum as a linear combination of, uh, of, uh, the, uh, of known uh, paints used by uh, the painter. And by doing that, uh, the nice thing you do is you reconstruct the colors of the painting, and this is the reconstruction of the colors uh, compared with the portrait uh, uh, by the same artist, uh, probably of the same person. Uh, and so you get a lot of information which uh, would be totally inaccessible uh, with uh, uh, other methods and in using a really non destructive method because the painting was. Uh, uh, of course, uh, just looked at with, uh, with X-rays. I'm, I'm, I'm particularly fond of this uh, of this uh, uh, study because it, I think, it shows how many. Because to do that thing, uh, you have to put together uh, physicists. You have to put together uh, <coughs> computer scientists who will help to for the uh, to take the measurement. Uh, you need historians. Uh, you need uh, uh, people from the museum. Uh, you need a good insurance company, but that's another story. Uh, to move a Van Gogh from a uh, museum in Amsterdam to two synchrotrons is not obvious. But uh, really, uh, it's, uh, it's something which uh, cannot be done not only because uh, of the properties of synchro radiation, but also because of what you find at uh, a synchro radiation, which is the, this mixture of competence. Having all that in mind, uh, um, uh, but we don't have a, a more recent picture, unfortunately. Now the, uh, the roof is white, it is not uh, uh, blue, um, blue green as it used to be. Uh, where is Sesame? Sesame is um, located in, in, in an interesting part of the world. As you can see, it's uh, in, the, uh, <coughs> in the north uh, of Jordan. Uh, close to the border of, uh, uh, with Syria, close to the, uh, to the Palestinian Authority, Israel, and uh, not far away from the border to uh, Iraq. So it's uh, a, a, uh, in a place uh, of where you, do you see the convergence of uh, um, different countries, let's put it like that. And uh, Sesame is an international organization. Uh, the model of Sesame is CERN. So the idea is uh, uh, that you have uh, uh, countries which uh, contribute to, uh, its, uh, uh, to uh, its expenses in a way which is proportional to the um, gross uh, internal product. And these are the uh, members of uh, the international organization. And uh, there is also a number of observers, uh, uh, countries, uh, uh, most, uh, as you can see, most uh, European countries are in, in that list, uh, uh, such and also United States and others are, are uh, in that list too. So uh, if you uh, concentrate on the list of members, uh, you will see that uh, you uh, find uh, coexisting uh, members uh, who often do not talk to each other, to say the least. Uh, and that is exactly the bet of Sesame. The idea is that uh, uh, scientists uh, will uh, uh, be able to talk to each other independently of the, what their governments uh, uh, think, or independently of their religion, to build something which is uh, for the um, 
for the uh, uh, development of uh, mankind. Um, and, uh, and at the same time, by doing it in a region which suffers not only from uh, uh, conflicts uh, uh, of various kinds, but also from uh, uh, also because of the conflicts uh, of uh, uh, brain drain. Uh, it tra is trying to do, uh, to reverse the brain drain. And of course, as it has happened in all places where uh, laboratories like these uh, have been established, will uh, contribute to develop to the technological uh, development. From a te technical point of view, uh, Sesame uh, originally uh, was supposed to be just uh, the reinstallation of an old uh, uh, laboratory, uh, which was Bessie 1. Bessie 2 was just mentioned uh, a minute ago. Uh, so Bessie 1 was the, the, synchrotron, uh, uh, the synchrotron radiation source in Berlin, which was uh, stopped its operation in 95 when, uh, when Bessie 2 uh, came into operation. And at this point, I cannot avoid to mention the fact that uh, I was uh, postdoc uh, in Berlin, and uh, I'm so old that I remember the excitement for the first beam stored in Bessie One. So it's you know things uh, come back uh, on your <laughs> in your life uh, in a way you don't expect. Anyway, uh, Bessie One. So the idea, original idea was uh, okay. Let's rebuild uh, Bessie One, but then. This was a very limiting idea because, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you really want to foster the uh, technology and the science in a place, you have to give uh, uh, scientists uh, uh, what they really need, what they really need. So a real, um, well-equipped, uh, well-equipped instrument. So the idea developed and uh, into the idea of building an entirely new uh, third generation, as we call uh, them, uh, sync radiation source, using uh, what uh, we could uh, of uh, what had been donated by Germany uh, in form of uh, Bessie One, uh, to use them as uh, injector of the, uh, of the machine. And indeed, that is the schema which was chosen, it's shown here, uh, you see on the, on the right, you see the small ring that is the uh, uh, Bessie One, uh, the Bessie One ring with its uh, very old Microtron as first injector. And uh, the, new, uh, the, new, uh, the new ring, uh, which is uh, 133 meters uh, uh, circumference around it, that is what uh, uh, it looks like uh, with uh, its shielding within the uh, building, uh, um, the square building which hosts uh, the laboratory. And this is a uh, picture taken during the construction of the uh, shielding wall in 2010, and it was completed in 2000, and the shielding wall was completed in 2011. In 2012, uh, the, uh, e the pre injector uh, started its, uh, its operation. And uh, after that, uh, the booster, so the old Bessie one, was installed. And these are, uh, this is a picture of the, uh, of the of part of the booster. So you see uh, a few, mi uh, you, you see the, the dipole magnet, the current monitor, uh, the RF cavity, which is used to uh, give energy to the beam, uh, a corrector, a quadruple magnet. And uh, uh, this, uh, the installation, of the booster ended more or less uh, uh, in 2013, and uh, uh, last September uh, the uh, beam, the uh, the booster reached uh, its specified energy of 800 MeV, uh, MeV. Uh, and this is the team uh, uh, which accomplished uh, uh, this result. Uh, we like to say that that represents uh, the highest energy beam in the Middle East. Uh, this energy was never reached uh, uh, in this part of the world. Um, and uh, uh, as uh, okay, I can anticipate uh, uh, or something which I'm going to tell you, which is that uh, uh, at the end of 2013, uh, so uh, nine months before uh, this achievement, uh, uh, the roof uh, of the laboratory collapsed uh, under an, an extraordinary snowstorm 
which means uh, that this result was obtained without a roof, which uh, I think is, <laughs> is uh, particular, as, uh, some, uh, by itself uh, is a sort of, uh, of a miracle. Uh, the achievement uh, of this, uh, uh, we're trying to uh, get people involved in the development of Sesame, uh, so we started a, a Facebook page because, of course, uh, if you're not on Facebook, you don't exist. So um, the, uh, the, uh, we gave the announcement uh, through various means, including Facebook, and you can see that we managed to reach about uh, 4,000 people uh, just by doing that. The storage ring is uh, in advanced uh, uh, st uh, stage of construction. Actually, there is nothing uh, in Jordan yet, but around the world, uh, the uh, people are working on, uh, on our components. I'll show you. Uh, okay, this is what, uh, sorry. This is what uh, uh, the magnet design, magnet design looks like. That was done, uh, the magnets of the storage ring uh, are uh, being uh, uh, built in the framework of a, a, a European uh, EU-funded project uh, to CERN. So uh, CERN, uh, the uh, European Union uh, gave a contribution of uh, roughly 5 million euros to CERN, and CERN is uh, developing the uh, magnets for us. And uh, these are some uh, uh, examples of the, uh, the magnets which are now being tested and uh, a complete sector of the machine has already been uh, uh, mounted and, uh, and the measurement of the magnetic field uh, have been done. By next uh, year, not only will we get uh, the magnets uh, uh, from CERN, but uh, the, the, uh, we will get uh, other components. Uh, one is the, um, the, the machine chamber, of course, which is uh, you need a UHV chamber to host, uh, to, 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 to have the electrons go around. Uh, we will receive the uh, RF cavities, which are being built uh, in Italy in the laboratory I come from. We will get the RF amplifiers, uh, which are being built uh, at Soleil in, uh, uh, in France. So uh, by uh, beginning of next year, by the beginning of 2016, we will have uh, all the components and uh, we expect to install the, all these components in the first half of, the, uh, of 2016 in order to uh, start the commissioning uh, uh, in the second half of the year and have the first uh, usable uh, photon beams at the end of the year. 2016. Uh, beam lines. Uh, okay, we, this is our, the first beam lines uh, uh, which will be installed. We start with uh, a project of uh, four beam lines uh, so, uh, going from uh, uh, this, uh, this is the list. So we have a, a, an infrared spectrum microscope. Uh, we have a line, beam line for uh, excess. One for material science uh, powder diffraction and one for micropolecular crystallography. Uh, the status of those lines, uh, uh, as reported uh, briefly now, the infrared beam line uh, looks like that. Uh, um, without going into too many details, uh, uh, for infrared, the infrared radiation is emitted at very large angles from the uh, from the. Um, electron orbit, therefore you have to go very close uh, with your mirrors, so you have to put mirrors uh, on the other side of the wall, and this is what uh, uh, this beam, uh, the design of this beam line is uh, um, very similar to other beam lines uh, in uh, Soleil and uh, one being built in Alba, uh, because we have a lot of support uh, uh, from our friends, uh, in, particular, in particular case, I have to thank Paul Dumas uh, from Soleil for uh, helping us in the design. We already have the uh, infrared uh, um, ma microscope, which uh, is already open for, uh, for users. We had, uh, okay, without going into too many details, we have, uh, these are some examples of uh, collaborating uh, um, uh, researches being done with uh, uh, people from uh, uh, from the region, so you see from Iran, 
And not only, uh, uh, as I said before, we are open to collaboration with all countries. So, for example, you see that there is one, uh, the, 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 um, the, the, uh, <coughs> One of the experiments is done by, uh, with a group from Iraq, and Iraq is not uh, a member of uh, SESAMI. Uh, and this is an example of uh, infrared images on, um, uh, on uh, uh, breast cancer cells. Uh, so uh, please do not ask me questions about these things. I'm a poor solid state physicist, so um, I am showing things uh, which I uh, do not very much about. Um, that happens when you start wearing a jacket, uh, so, so that's uh, one of the problems. Anyway, uh, the uh, beeline scientist, uh, uh, because talking about uh, uh, having people going uh, uh, to Europe or elsewhere, just left us. Uh, he uh, got a position at the uh, Spanish synchrotron, but uh, we uh, started immediately a, a search and uh, we are hiring uh, a new uh, beeline scientist from Egypt and uh, uh, she should be able to join us uh, in July if, uh, or August, uh, depending on the various uh, uh, bureaucratic constraints. The XAS beamline uh, is, um, is in good shape. Uh, we have uh, the uh, console design report and uh, the technical design report has been completed. And uh, the beamline scientist is from Algeria. Algeria was mentioned before, it's, uh, it's a neighboring country. He um, He's originally from Algeria, he did his PhD in France, and then he moved to the Swiss Life Source, and then he, he decided to uh, come back to the region, or at least uh, something which is uh, closer to the region. Uh, so he's with us uh, now and he's working on the uh, construction of the, the beam line, which looks like that. And uh, this uh, beam line uh, was donated uh, by uh, the Helmut Centrum uh, Rossendorf, uh, and the, the beam line was actually installed at the SRF, and this is the, we have most of the components. Uh, uh, there, so this is our, this is the uh, components uh, safely installed in a laboratory uh, because, there, as I said, uh, until a few weeks ago we didn't have a roof. Presently, we are, um, uh, we have an open tender uh, for the uh, radiation safety hatches, which uh, will look like that. You see, you have uh, the uh, the the accelerator is on the left hand side. And uh, uh, so we have two main hatches, one for, for the optics and one for the experimental station. And uh, while, uh, so we, uh, we have a deadline for receiving the uh, tenders in May. Uh, we hope, uh, uh, it depends on what the companies, uh, the selected company will tell us, but we expect the, uh, the hatches to be installed by uh, autumn this year. Uh, this is very important for me because that will be the first uh, uh, stable infrastructure uh, to be installed in experimental hall, and that will uh, uh, give us uh, momentum, I'm sure. Uh, while that is being done, uh, we are working on various um, uh, research projects. Uh, we are looking at soil contamination. Uh, we have a, an IAEA funded program uh, to study as I said, the soil contamination in various, uh, um, in various uh, uh, areas in Jordan and in Egypt. Okay, I think we can go quickly on that. The uh, material science beamline uh, uh, is the um, comes from the uh, comes from the Swiss Life Source. Uh, it was donated to us uh, uh, as a consequence of a major upgrade the uh, process uh, um, of the Swiss resource. Uh, we have uh, uh, the, the beam line includes also uh, a, um, a, a wiggler. So uh, for that, uh, we are, uh, I'm just showing you the drawing, uh, the uh, selection of uh, the new uh, Bin Line scientist uh, is uh, is uh, in good uh, in good shape. We have uh, at least uh, three good uh, uh, candidates, and so uh, we will be 
uh, able to select uh, uh, a new a new midline scientist in, in the next uh, in the next weeks. For, micro, for macromolecular crystallography, we had some internal discussion, and we decided that as as we did for uh, the overall project uh, or the overall uh, accelerator, uh, we think that uh, it is uh, better uh, to try and build. Uh, a, a new, a brand new beam line with uh, uh, good uh, uh, performance uh, comparable to what you get at other, uh, at other laboratories. So for this reason, we um, uh, recently, uh, together with Arij, who is going to give the next talk, uh, we uh, submitted a proposal to the Jordan, uh, Jordanian uh, uh, funding uh, uh, journal fund a proposal which includes a beam line uh, with these characteristics and uh, and actually it's a, a combined effort to have uh, a a, um, a modern and uh, sophisticated beam line combined with a sample uh, so a protein uh, uh, expression protein uh, uh, protein crystallization facility, uh, which will be described in more details by Elish. Okay, uh, I think I can skip uh, uh, this because time is passing very quickly. Uh, so we can just go here. We have an extensive uh, training program or a number of uh, training programs for uh, uh, young scientists uh, in the region. Uh, with uh, the idea uh, to build up a, uh, a well-trained um, well user community. And uh, these are various examples of uh, uh, training uh, activities uh, uh, we are going on, uh, we are working on. And this is another, this is the, the international support we have. So basically we have funding agencies and the laboratories uh, who can uh, actually host our users, prospective users, and also our staff uh, to get trained. Uh, for, I will just mention with some details one example, that is the Lounsbury Foundation, uh, which is an American foundation, uh, which uh, uh, provided us uh, with, uh, uh, with funds. And uh, last year, we had uh, quite a success, sort of focus. Uh, I got a success uh, in getting, we got uh, 30 applications uh, from all over the region and we were able to support eight, uh, uh, eight young, uh, or not so young in some cases, but uh, new to the field, let's say, uh, scientists uh, who, uh, as you can see, were f coming from Pakistan, Jordan, uh, Egypt, and uh, other places. Um, Okay, and then basically uh, they were they were able to go to various uh, uh, laboratories uh, uh, in the world and get uh, some training, including a reach. Just to mention, just to mention one. Okay. The skeleton of the roof uh, is taken from uh, the corridor uh, just in front of my office, and this is the. Unfortunately, I can only show you the inside of the. Uh, experimental hall. This picture was taken, I think, uh, two weeks ago, and the, uh, you see that the uh, the cover is there uh, again, and um, so now we can uh, really uh, go ahead and work on the technical uh, developments. Okay, uh, so in conclusion, there are challenges, of course. Uh, the unexpected challenge of the roof, but that has been solved. <laughs> but there are <laughs> challenges uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, stable financial support. Uh, but in spite of that, we uh, continue and we are progressing. Uh, and uh, we have had uh, an increase in budget uh, by a few uh, member countries, Jordan, Turkey, uh, Israel, and Egypt, which allowed us to actually uh, speed up uh, the construction of both the uh, accelerator and the beam lines. And so we're really confident that by next year there will be a new uh, uh, operating uh, synchrotron radiation laboratory on the map. Thank you very much for your attention.